What is muscle tone and motor control? Every muscle in the human body gets messages to and from the central nervous system, that is the brain and spinal cord, through the nerves. Every nerve is made up of bundles of nerve fibers or neurons. Some of these nerve fibers, called motor neurons, send messages from the brain to the muscles. Other nerve fibers take information back to the brain from the muscles, the eyes, ears, skin, and the rest of our sense organs. These are called sensory neurons. Information goes back and forth between all the parts of the body and the brain all the time. When we are awake, even when we're not actively doing something, our muscles have just enough tension in them to keep our basic posture and to be ready to move as soon as they get a signal from the brain. This base level of tension in the muscles is called muscle tone. If you have too much muscle tone or too little muscle tone, getting your body to do what you want it to becomes much harder. Too much or too little muscle tone occurs when the communication between the central nervous system and the muscles breaks down. There are many reasons why this might happen. The problem might be in the brain, in the muscles themselves, or in the system that transmits the messages back and forth. Central nervous system damage and infection are probably the most common cause of muscle tone problems. The damage might have happened before or during birth or any time during infancy or childhood. Examples include acquired brain injury, spinal cord injury, cerebral palsy, and stroke. Genetic syndromes are another common cause. Some syndromes cause children to be born with a difference in muscle tone that stays the same throughout the child's life. Down syndrome, which causes low muscle tone, is an example of this kind of syndrome. Other syndromes or diseases, such as muscular dystrophy, cause muscle tone to change over a person's lifetime. Because muscle tone is the amount of tension in your muscles when they are at rest, to find out how much muscle tone a child has, the doctor or therapist will move a part of the body without the child's help. This is called testing passive range of motion. In a relaxed person with normal muscle tone, there is very little resistance to this passive movement. There are two basic kinds of muscle tone problems, low muscle tone and high muscle tone. Mixed muscle tone is any combination of high, low, and normal muscle tone, so there are many different kinds of mixed muscle tone. Too little resting tension in any muscle is known as low muscle tone, or, to use the medical term, hypotonia. Imagine falling asleep sitting up. Your head droops. If you're holding something, you may drop it. This is because muscles lose their resting tension, or muscle tone, as you fall asleep. Have you ever picked up a sleeping child and noticed she seems heavier and harder to carry than when she's awake? That is due to her lack of muscle tone when she's asleep. There's a wide range of low muscle tone, from muscles that are just slightly less resistant than you'd expect, to muscles that offer no resistance at all, like a deeply asleep child. This extremely low muscle tone is also called flaccidity. Children with low muscle tone will take longer to learn how to do things like developing head control, rolling, sitting, and walking. Things that look easy for other children will take more effort for the child with low muscle tone. Too much tension in the muscles is known as high muscle tone or hypertonia. To imagine what high muscle tone might feel like, think of a time you've had a cramp in your calf or foot. You may have had to move your foot or rub your leg to make the cramp go away. When your foot was cramping up, those muscles were exhibiting high muscle tone. There are two main types of high muscle tone, rigidity and spasticity. Rigidity, or rigid high muscle tone, results in muscles that are equally resistant to stretch no matter how slowly or quickly they are moved. Dale has mixed muscle tone, very rigid muscle tone in his trunk, shoulders, and elbows, but normal tone in his wrists and fingers. Rigid muscles move very little or very slowly with great effort. Rigidity is not as common in children as the other kind of high muscle tone, spasticity. In someone with spasticity or spastic high muscle tone, the more quickly or suddenly you move the muscles, the more the muscles will resist the stretch. Children with spastic high muscle tone are also often hyperreflexic, that is, their reflexes are triggered more easily and are much stronger than in a typically developing child or adult. Do you ever jump when somebody comes up behind you unexpectedly? If you do, that's your startle reflex being triggered. In many children with high muscle tone, the startle reflex is very strong. It takes very little to startle them, and they take a long time to recover. 
Other reflex reactions, such as automatically grasping when something is put in your hand and straightening out your whole body when your feet or back are touched, are also common in children with high muscle tone. So remember, for children with spastic high muscle tone, it's easy to trigger reflexes and how fast or how suddenly you move a part of the child's body will affect the tone in those muscles. Let's return to Julia, who has typical muscle tone, and talk about voluntary muscle control, or getting your muscles to do what you want, when you want. As the therapist moves Julia's arm back and forth, you can see that Julia is relaxed, and her muscles don't resist this passive movement. However, when Julia wants to put her headband on, she easily resists the therapist, as her muscles quickly and smoothly transition from being relaxed to doing what her brain tells them to. This ability to get your body to do the things you want to do is called voluntary motor control. Children with muscle tone problems often have difficulty with voluntary motor control. Here, Karis's therapist has asked her for a high five. Karis is trying to raise her right hand for the high five, but her body isn't quite cooperating. For children and teens like Karis, because there is a difficulty in the messages getting between the brain and the muscles, the muscles respond more slowly or in a different way than the child wanted them to. For some children with muscle tone problems, doing things like giving a high five are further complicated by involuntary movements, movements that the child can't control. See how Karis's head turns to the side and her left arm pulls up as she tries to get her right arm to give the high five? Involuntary movements can be part of a reflex reaction or part of an underlying movement disorder. Children with movement and muscle tone problems are more likely to need help with basic care than other children. They're also at greater risk of being injured during basic care activities. The rest of this video is divided into practical chapters with basic ideas and techniques to make it less likely that you will accidentally injure the children you work with who have muscle tone problems or difficulty moving their bodies on their own.